Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring a section of this video. Today we take it for granted that we can predict what the weather will do a week or so from now. But for most of human history, the idea that weather could be predicted was frankly ludicrous. I mean, yes, there was some folk wisdom, for example, if you saw a field of cows that was lying down, that meant that rain was possibly on the way. And in the UK specifically, if you saw a red sky in the morning, that meant that bad weather was probably on the way. And there is actually some truth to that one. As late as 1854, a member of parliament suggested that perhaps with modern science that the weather in London could be predicted a day ahead of it actually happening. And he was literally laughed out of the Houses of Parliament. Weather could be assessed and maybe even understood, it was believed, but not predicted. Weather couldn't be predicted. And if anybody said that they could predict the future like that, well, they were unnatural. They were a witch. A witch! A witch! A witch! A witch! A witch! Various laws in England in the Tudor and Stuart periods, so the 16th and 17th centuries, specifically targeted witches and sorcery and made a variety of activities punishable by death. One of which was very specifically the ability to predict the future. For some reason, predicting where things that you have lost will be in the future was very witchy in particular. Eventually, however, it was realised that these witchcraft laws were basically being used to justify the mob murder of harmless old women. And so in 1735, the then British Parliament passed the Witchcraft Act of 1735, which repealed that previous witchcraft legislation and instead imposed fines and imprisonment on anybody who claimed to be able to practice witchcraft. So in the eyes of the law, it was no longer illegal to be a witch or a wizard because Parliament seemingly didn't really believe in those things anymore. Anymore, but it was illegal to pretend to be able to do witchery or sorcery, such as, I don't know, pretending to be able to predict the future. Fast forward now to the 19th century. A lot of technological innovation happened between the 18th and 19th centuries, but the most relevant to our story here is the development of communication technologies, specifically the development of the electric telegraph. Being a primitive form of electronic communication, the telegraph allowed for pretty much instantaneous communication of information over vast distances. For the first time in human history, information across an entire country, in fact even an entire continent, could be collated into a central data set in pretty much real time. That meant that observations of the weather in particular could be compiled in a way that just couldn't before. Even with the fastest communication possible, by the time a weather report from, say, Aberdeen reached London, the weather in Aberdeen would have moved on completely, making the weather report useless. And here enters into our story a guy called Robert Fitzroy. Who are you? Who are so wise in the ways of science? You may already be familiar with Robert Fitzroy as the man who captained HMS Beagle on its round-the-world trip carrying a certain Charles Darwin, but that's not even half of Fitzroy's contributions to science. Following the ludicrous suggestion in the British Parliament that the weather in London could be predicted, that same year, 1854, Fitzroy founded the UK Meteorological Office. Fitzroy's Met Office received electric telegraphs from observers all over the country, making use of a newly established network of observers that were scattered far and wide. They took their telegrams and compiled what we call a synoptic chart. This is basically a picture of what the atmosphere is doing over a wide area. It's a snapshot in time of how the atmosphere is behaving. And the UK Met Office was originally founded purely to collect this information and store it away, nothing else. Fitzroy though realised that certain features of these charts repeated themselves, and that if he were to compile a sequence of synoptic charts that he could maybe predict what a future chart in that sequence might look like, qualitatively at least. So, in 1861, Fitzroy started publishing storm warnings based on these predicted synoptic charts, basically telling shipping fleets whether it was safe to go out to sea or if they should come back to harbour. Later that same year, he did what many people thought was impossible. He produced the world's first weather forecast. He actually invented the term forecast, published in the Times of London on August 1st, 1861. This was the start of regular weather prediction as we know it today. Government scientists poring over data that's been collected and compiled into synoptic charts and predicting what the weather's going to do next, gazing into the future. 
Oh wait, the Witchcraft Act of 1735 was still in effect, and from this point onwards, in the eyes of the law, the UK Met Office was now a house of witchcraft and wizardry. But surely the UK government would pick up on this and change the part of the law where it said you can't see into the future when they realised they were harbouring a bunch of wizards out back. Nope. The Witchcraft Act of 1735 stayed law until 1951, where it was superseded by something called the Fraudulent Mediums Act and then some EU legislation. The last person to be imprisoned under the Witchcraft Act of 1735 was a woman called Helen Duncan in 1944. That means that for nearly a century, in the eyes of the law, the UK government was using sanctioned wizards to produce weather forecasts. Now, you could look at this and laugh at how silly people used to be, believing that only witches and wizards could see into the future, but to me at least, this is an interesting example of how technology changes our perceptions of our surroundings. The only reason we consider weather to be predictable in any meaningful way is because of the development of information sharing technologies like the electric telegraph. Without information gathered over a large area in pretty much real time, it may as well be sorcery to say that you can predict what the weather's going to do next. It just so happened that the development of the law didn't quite match the development of the technology. Oh, thank goodness we left that behind in the past. How do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. I see. Much of the history of science is really a history of technology. You can keep up to date and avoid becoming history yourself by picking up some new skills on Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app built on the principle that you learn best when getting your hands dirty, doing and solving problems in real time. Crucially, Brilliant isn't about memorising facts or lengthy formula, it's about the skills that you acquire by just getting your hands in and doing. And if you do make a mistake while doing one of these problems, no problem. Brilliant emphasises making mistakes in learning is a really powerful learning experience, and those mistakes don't matter. Whether you want to start at the basics of maths and science, or dive into cutting edge topics like cryptocurrency or neural networks, they have something for everybody. I've personally used Brilliant to brush up on my quantum mechanics and my chemistry, and I'm going to be checking out their course on machine learning for an upcoming video project. To get access to all this and more for yourself or for somebody else in your life, then head to brilliant.org slash Simon Clark and join a community of 8 million learners. And if you're one of the first 200 people to use the link in the description, you'll get a sweet 20% off a premium annual subscription to. Thank you so much to Brilliant for being such a long-term supporter of this channel and for sponsoring this video. If you found this story of wizard weathermen interesting, then you are going to absolutely love my book Firmament, The Hidden Science of Weather, Climate Change and the Air That Surrounds Us, available for pre-order right now, link down there in the below, coming out in January. Thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end. I really hope that you enjoyed this story, which was a little nugget of information I uncovered whilst I was researching the book. If you did enjoy the video, then let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know if there are any other little weird stories like this in the history of science that you know and perhaps I don't, because I love this stuff. You can also pop this video a like, share the video with people you think might enjoy it, and if you're not already, then you can subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more stuff like this. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.